بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم این السلام علیکم پاکستان وی بیک ٹو آر ماڈیول آن سائیکولوجیکل ڈسٹنسنگ اینڈ سلیکٹو اٹینشن لاسٹ ٹائم وی ٹاک ایکسٹینسولی آن بوتھ دا ٹاپکس اینڈ ٹو ڈے اگین ویل بی ٹیکنگ اٹ فارورڈ فرام اوور دیئر اینڈ سی دیٹ بیسائڈز لوکنگ ایٹ آر سیلف واٹ آر اٹس امپلیکیشن آن سوسائٹی ایز اے ہول اینڈ ہاؤ اٹ کین بی ڈیٹرمنٹل اور کین بی کنسٹرکٹو ان آر لائفز اور ان دا لائفز آف دا کمیونٹی اراؤنڈ اس اینڈ دیٹ از ایکسٹریملی امپارٹنٹ سو ladies and gentlemen just like we were talking about different experiments so today we're going to talk about the good uh, samaritan experiment each one of us may miss many ethically salient things that present themselves to us because all of us are in too much of a rush so again what happens is is that we tend to miss out on so many good things happening because we are focused uh, on whatever we want to do or achieve and again because our minds are attuned through the different factors affecting us such as media such as social media uh, such as different forms of communication and again that the world is now in our palm it actually does not result in clarity but can result in ambiguity and confusion and that is what the good S- S- samaritan experiment is basically about that why do we miss out on all of these things and why can't we prioritize on all of these things to make our lives and the lives of people around us far better so that becomes a very very important point each one of us may miss many salient things that present themselves to us because our attention is drawn away from our immediate surroundings what goes on in or what goes out of anyone's sphere of attention happens automatically so again in our subconscious even though we might be present but in our subconscious we might be thinking about something else totally we might be present in a class but we might be sitting in america we might be doing work in the office but we might be thinking of the mountains and the resorts in the mountains so subconsciously we could be thinking something or we could be present somewhere we could be physically doing something but mentally we would be somewhere else and that again tends to happen automatically we sometimes don't even have control of it and therefore it becomes more and more important that in psychological distance we do not isolate ourselves an example of psychological distance is modern warfare for example the drone warfare it's so pernicious the physical distance of attacking parties distances soldiers emotionally from the event so maybe if a soldier is asked to go and kill someone it can be emotionally draining and also emotionally debilitating but by the use of technology and in this particular case a drone then he or she can drop a bomb or fire bullets on someone and wreak horror and chaos in a particular community without emotionally connecting and that is being psychologically distant so it is easier for that individual to kill or injure humans through a drone rather than do it physically him or herself so that is a very pertinent example of psychological distance local examples could be the crisis of the internally displaced people and various reported instances of human rights violation now when these internally displaced persons especially from suwat came uh, down to the plains and the plateaus they had extremely debilitated conditions and the camps which were made were void and devoid of fundamental of fundamental structure of fundamental needs of the very fundamentals of community and it led to huge problems but the nation was oblivious of it because it was isolated it was not within the public eye and therefore the internally displaced persons suffered for years so this is again an example of psychological distancing in 2010 we see ladies and gentlemen floods which took place in august and september contributed to a large number of idps and suddenly idps were abruptly made to leave their homes and belongings because the floods totally overwhelmed societies and communities and towns and villages in some cases cities also now all of this that was happening again affected hundreds of thousands of people but due to psychological distancing we could not gain that level of mileage which is required to provide support services to all of these 
adversely affected families and individuals. So when we are at a distance, so what happens is that we can just cut ourselves off and not feel the real pain or the real essence or the real factors, but conjure up our own and apply it to the situation, which convolutes the situation and dilutes its impact. which might be good in certain cases but in most cases it's not because in simple words it is an emotional cover up which cannot be correct so one should not indulge in all of these things and one should try to empathize and sympathize rather than apathize and antipathize human beings are social animals or ashraf of makhlukat it is important that we mutually respect each other and mutually care for each other without distinction without discrimination without bias without favoritism without nepotism that is what is important when these refugees reached the alien camps they were ill prepared and suffocating and they had no resources for survival there were numerous human rights abuses but unfortunately it did not spark the national concern or the national imagination so again circumstances can be different and circumstances can be similar but if not communicated and converged in the right way it will not make an impact and that is what we have seen while dealing with our internally displaced persons So ladies and gentlemen selective attention and psychological distancing can be used positively but unfortunately in the modern world they are applied and implemented negatively that should be shunned away with we should move forward with an engagement policy and try to do things right because they are right and not do what is wrong because they are wrong and move forward towards the harmonization of society through equity and compassion thank you so much